His death was very sudden, Mrs. Krug. Yes, sir. He was alive last night when I brought him his supper. This morning, Hans found his body. Your son? Yes, sir. Yogi, Mr. Earlton's ace. But I thought he had disposed of him. No, sir. Do you mean to say that that animal is in this house? Yes, sir. Mr. Robert had Hans lock him in his cage in the cellar. Everything secure? Hands? The cage is strong enough. I put a chain across the door. Uh, but what makes him scream so? That's because of the corpse in the house. He remembers his dead master. You have my deepest sympathy, Robert. Thanks, Mr. Wilkes. It seems unbelievable that it could have happened so quick. Why, only last week when he was in the city, he seemed perfectly well. My brother always enjoyed good health, Mr. Wilkes. I was the sickly one, and now a paralytic. But could medical science do nothing for you? No, nothing can ever bring power to these lifeless limbs. <laughs> Uh, don't be alarmed, Mr. Wilkes. He is securely locked in his cage. Would you care to see him? Why, uh, yes, if it is not too much trouble. And take Mr. Wilkes down to see Yogi. Yes, sir. There was a mate to this one, but it died in one of Dr. Earlson's experiments. What was the nature of that experiment? I don't know. But he was the doctor's favorite. Yogi had the run of the house. He knew every nook and corner. But was there no danger? Miss Ruth was afraid of him. But that's because he was always jealous of her. So that is why she went away. I suppose she had other reasons for wanting to get away from this dreary old place. And she's coming back here tonight. If she does, he'll know. They'll never forget their hatred. Yes, sir. Light a fire there. It's growing cold. Make a room as cheerful as possible. Yes, sir. Oh, excuse me, sir. Look down the road and see if you see any signs of Miss Ruth.
Sanders has just told me of that animal's hatred for Ruth. They should not be in the same house together. She's perfectly safe. He can't possibly escape. Why, with his tremendous strength, anything is possible. Did you not consider that, Robert, when you asked me to read the will in this house? I was selfish, perhaps. I was thinking of my own condition. But I think she would have come to see her father anyway. is increasing. I'm afraid I shall have to impose on your hospitality and spend the night here. Yes, 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 of course, of course. Mrs. Krug. Mrs. Krug. Mrs. Krug. Prepare a room for Mr. Will. The guest room is ready, sir. No. No, no, I think Mr. Wilkes would be more comfortable in the other wing of the house, away from our family sorrow. Oh, anywhere will do, Mrs. Krug. Did you see anyone on the road, Han? Can't see a thing. Someone coming now. But how do you know? He always acts like that when there's somebody arriving that he knows. Could it be Ruth? I wonder. I wonder. I were not so helpless. If my shrunken body could lift you up and comfort you. There, there, my child. Be brave, dear. Be brave. I could only have, only have been here and talked with him. Just seen him once again. Let me take his place in your heart, now that you're more than ever alone. Oh, I loved him so much. I should never have gone away. <laughs> Nothing to fear, dear. He is securely caged. Oh, but he frightens me so. Oh, pardon me. Uncle Robert, my fiance, Dr. Clayton. I'm happy to know you, sir. You have my deepest sympathy. Thank you, Mr. Wilkes. Oh, Ted, my father's attorney, Mr. Wilkes, Dr. Clayton. Glad to know you. Happy to meet you, sir. What's that? That's Yogi. What's the matter with that man? He must be in misery. His master is dead. Where? In there? Well, well, you 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 told the bank in there. Uh, I've got to fix on this generator and the spark plugs. Yeah. Ted. Will you wait? Certainly, dear. Make yourself comfortable, Doctor. There is little I can say in welcome at a time like this. I understand, sir. And I extend you my deepest sympathy. Thank you. You knew my brother? You were acquainted with his work? Yes. 
I suppose that was an ape's cry that startled Ruth. But there is no cause for alarm. I have him secured beyond possible means of escape. Mr. Wilkes inspected him. Oh, yes, sir. He's in a cage. But he's such a powerful animal. I would not have wanted to be closer. Nothing will harm you, dear. Auntie Krug will put you to bed in your own little room, just like when you were a little girl. Oh. I can't seem to realize. It was all so sudden. Yes, very sudden. Come along with Tante, dear. Hello, Hank. Hello, Miss Ruth. Glad to see you. The luggage, where shall I put it? Put it in our old room. Oh. Your Uncle Robert arranged it that way. I'll fix your things for you. Thank you, Tante. to tell them. Not if he is dead, it should be known. Don't be a fool. We may be turned out. But it is our right. Haven't we been still long enough? No. Wait until the will is read. We may be rich. into the village tonight. Stay here. But the reading of your father's will should be a family matter. I'd better go to the inn. Please stay. I want you here tonight. Dear, you're nervous. Please. All right. I'll stay. I'll get my things. They're in the car. Are you leaving, doctor? No, uncle. He's going to see about putting the car up. You'll be more comfortable here than at the inn. Well, certainly, Doctor. We can consider you one of the family. Well, thank you very much. Oh, Hans, will you show Dr. Clayton where to put his car? He's staying all night. All right, Miss Ruth. Thank you, dear. I'll only be a minute. Tante, will you prepare the guest room? Yes, I will, dear. Yes, Dr. Clayton. Get the bags out of the car. We're staying here for the night. Well, isn't that what I'm called, sir? You know, Dr. Clayton, I think I'll go for a walk. Go to a movie or uh, uh, play some peewee golf. Nonsense. You can't walk to the village in this storm. It's 11 miles. That's just a pleasant walk. I just love to take off my shoes and play in the raindrop. I'd skip part of the way, too. <laughs> Did you hear that? Get the bags out of the car. Hans will take care of it. Oh, 
Jed. Did Hans take care of the car? Yes. He's showing Exodus where he can sleep. Shall I proceed with the reading of the will, Miss Fruit? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize the... Oh, that's perfectly all right, Doctor. You may remain. Thank you, but I prefer to go to my room. Will you show Dr. Clayton to his room, Tanti? The doctor will be more comfortable in the other wing with Mr. Wilt. But Miss Ruth said Dr. Clayton was to occupy the guest room. Well, of course, Ruth. I was thinking only of the doctor's comfort. Come, doctor. I'll come back when you're through. Is it necessary for uh, Mrs. Krug to be present? Why, yes. She is mentioned in the will. Come with me and I'll show you where you can sleep. Where's the dead man at? On the second floor. Well, I'll sleep in the cellar then. That's where Yogi is. You mean that man at a house, oh? Well, you give me an umbrella and I'll go up on the roof. Come on. <coughs> In the name of God, I, Philip Elton, being of sound mind and memory and not acting under duress, menace, fraud, or undue influence of any person whatever, do make, publish, and direct, declare this my last will and testament in the manner following. That is to say that I bequeath all money to my credit at the Hudson National Bank in the amount of $50,000, together with all personal property in the safe deposit boxes at the Hudson National Bank, which consists of house and lot and furnishings and personal effects pertaining to house and grounds to my only daughter, Ruth Elton, and sole heir. In the event that my sole heir, Ruth, should meet with death in the meantime, then the above I bequeath to my only brother, Robert Elton. In loving memory, I hereby provide that he be sheltered and suitably provided for in our family home until his death. This home to be maintained until such time. To my faithful servant, Emma Krug, I hereby bequeath the sum of $50 monthly to be paid out of my estate. This sum to continue without recourse until her death. I hereby appoint William Wilkes as executor of my will to act without bond. Witness my hand this the 22nd day of April, 1925. Philip Elton. I'm very grateful to your father, Miss Rose. Philip was always thoughtful and just. I'm very happy. My wishes are realized in spending the remaining years. Have they finished? Yes, sir. Thank you. It ain't fair. It ain't fair, not a penny. And we have been still for so long. And now we get scraps thrown at us by strangers. It wasn't him. He was a good man. Huh, now she comes back. Now there's money to be had. And we who have stayed and worked get nothing. Wait. Wait. Someday. I've waited long enough. I'm going to speak. And if you do, I'll swear that you are mad. Now carry him upstairs. Ready to go upstairs now? Yes. It's been a trying day. I think I had better retire. You also, Ruth. I'm coming with you, Uncle. Coming, Ted? No, if you don't mind, I think I'll stay here and chat with Mr. Wilk. All right. Good night, Mr. Wilk. Good night, Miss Ruth. 
That yogi man sure is mad about something. If he's going to yodel all night, ain't nobody going to sleep. Hans, I will go through my brother's room. I have had my bed moved to the room next to his, so we could spend these last few hours together. Go to my room, dear. Yes, Uncle. If I only had a daughter now, to be always near me. I, I shall always want to be near you, Uncle. You are so much like Daddy that it will keep his memory fresh and dear to me. You are now a wealthy girl, Ruth, and you must make the most of it. Wealth to youth is golden, but to age it is a milestone. I love you, dear. Good night. Good night. Hypocrite. Damn dull hypocrite. Why don't you tell her you hate her? Why don't you tell her you want the money more than she does? You're all liars. A remarkable woman, Mrs. Krug. She's been here for nearly 20 years. Her devotion to the brothers was almost her religion. And, uh, Han, is he her son? Yes. He was a baby when he came here. I believe she comes of a very good family, but she gave up everything to come to America. Mm -hmm. They're Germans, aren't they? Yes, so are the Eltons. I think there's some sort of a distant relationship. There's a large fortune involved, isn't there? Mm, considerable. Enough to almost burden a young woman like Ruth. I believe she understood the provision of the will. The estate is hers unconditionally. Her father intimated as much. Well, fortunately, there are no other direct heirs. You know, wills are always open to contest, Doctor. Yes. And a large fortune is always a temptation, Mr. Wilkes. Yes, Doctor. Well, shall we retire? Well, if you don't mind, I think I'll stay here and smoke a cigar. Good night. Good night, Doctor. I... I've attended to your car and driver, sir. Thank you, Hans. Good night, dear. Oh. Miss Ruth wishes to speak to you before you retire. Thank you. Good night, Dr. Clayton. Good night, Mrs. Crowe. Come in, Ted. Mrs. Crowe said you wanted to see me. What is it? Listen, Ted. I have a premonition that something's going to happen. Something horrible. Yeah, it's your nerve. What you need is some rest. Oh, I know it seems foolish. But it's all about me, oppressing me. The house wasn't like this when Daddy was alive. That's because you've grown unaccustomed to it. It's an old place, isn't it? 
It's supposed to belong to smugglers a long time ago. There are tunnels and secret passageways all through the house. Daddy had them all sealed up because when I was a kid, I was always getting lost in them. <laughs> That's well. That's the first smile I've seen today. Now, it's time little girls like you should be in bed. And I could do with some sleep myself. You're going to have to take something for your nerves, young lady. All right, doctor. Should I take an apple a day? Apples are strictly forbidden in your diet. Good night, dear. Good night, sweet. Lock and bolt every door and window. Nobody's gonna steal their money. It's not here. I wasn't thinking of their money. I just heard Ruth scream. Ruth, open the door, Ruth. What was that? Uh, someone, come to me. Ruth. Wilkes, what is it? What has happened? Now be calm, Robert, be calm. It, it was my niece. I heard a scream. What is it? Oh, Dad! Dad! Well, what happened, Ruth? What's the matter? Oh, it was... yourself and tell me just exactly what happened. Oh, it was the eighth yogi. When I awakened, his arm was above me and he was clutching at my throat. Oh, it was horrible. Horrible. Yes, dear. Mrs. Krug. Oh, Dante. There, there, dear. 
You're just nervous and excited. All right, it grilled. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. She is terrorized. She said that awful brute was in her room. No, no, no. He couldn't possibly escape. Rouse hand, send him to the cage and tell him to bring Ruth here to me. Yes. been out of its cage? No, sir. The lock hasn't been touched and everything is the way I left it. Well, that's a relief. Miss Ruth evidently had a nightmare. Dr. Klein? Oh, Dr. Klein. I bet he's down there giving that yoga man a pill. Please don't do it this time. Don't bite on this time, Mr. Yoga. Don't be loose, Mr. Yoga. I'll leave you. I ain't never coming back here no more. What is all this nonsense? What did you say, Yoga? Well, don't go on. I thought that was Mr. Yoga had over me. Go to your room. Yeah, that's why I'm going and far away from here. That's all right, you need to show me I'm going in there. He is securely fastened in his cage. I have just come from there. Did you find anything, Doctor? Nothing. I've carefully examined your room, dear, and there's no evidence of anyone having been there. My little girl was having a nightmare. You're wrought up. Your nerves were playing you tricks. But it was so real. I can't believe I was dreaming. Dreams always seem real, dear. Now what could possibly harm you in the room where you had slept since you were a child? I'm an awful baby. I've disturbed and frightened you all. You let your doctor give you something to soothe your nerves and have Mrs. Krug put you back to bed. I'm awfully sorry. Good night. Well, I must confess, Robert, it gave me an awful jolt. Ruth was always emotional, even as a child. <laughs> oh, Ted, I can't. The impression was too vivid. I can't sleep in that room. Then perhaps I'd better take it to the inn. There, there, dear. Tante Krug will stay with you just like she used to do when you were a little girl. Will you, Tante? Of course I will. Don't worry, dear. I'll be all right with Andy Krug. You've had a very severe shock. I'll get something that will help you sleep. just before you go to bed, after it's dissolved. Thanks, dear. Perhaps I won't need it. I'll sit up for a while to make sure you're all right. Thanks. Good night. Good night, dear. Now compose yourself, Robert. 
and try to get some sleep. You may have another patient, Doctor. You go to bed, Tondi. I'm going to sit up a while. You should have rest, Ruth. Oh, I couldn't go to sleep right now. I'm going to read a while. Uh, Mr. Wilkes, uh, just where were you when Ruth screamed? Well, I was here, smoking my cigar. I must have dozed off. When I heard the scream, I rushed upstairs immediately. And you stopped by Robert's room? Why, yes. Her scream had awakened him also. And Hans was at the foot of the stairs, and he went to the cellar with you. Yes. The ape was in his cage, and the chain was securely fastened. I'm convinced the truth was dreaming. Ruth tells me this is quite an old house. Yes, it is. It has a lot of secret passageways in it. Do you know anything about them? No, but Hans might know. Hans. I'd like to talk to him. Well, his room is next to the kitchen. I'll go and get him. Clayton wishes to speak to you. You wanted to talk to me? Yes, Hans. I want to ask you some questions. If uh, Yogi should escape from his cage, Miss Ruth would be in great danger. Well, you can't get out, sir. I locked the cage myself. Mm -hmm. Are there any tunnels near his cage that he might crawl through? Well, they've all been locked long ago. Has Yogi ever escaped from his cage? Well, sometimes when I used to lock him up for the night, he'd suddenly appear in the doctor's or Mr. Roberts' room. They'd only laugh and say you could pick the lock. That's why I put the chain on the door. That's all, Hans. You may go. Very well. Are you sure that Yogi was locked in his cage? I'm positive. He'd have to be released by human hands. Yet Ruth is not the type of historical woman that's given to nightmares. I think you're alarming yourself unnecessarily, Doctor. I wonder. 
I still can't believe she was dreaming. plays until late in the night. You say Hans was in the cellar? Why hadn't he gone to bed? Well, Hans's room is almost over Yogi's cage. And he told me, before he heard the scream, that he heard some sort of slight shuffling noise coming from the cellar. And he went down there to investigate. How long has Uncle Robert been an invalid? Robert? Why, surely, Doctor, you can't suspect Robert. Why, Robert hasn't walked in over a year. Nevertheless, I'm worried. I'd like to talk to Robert. Would you care to come along? Why, certainly. sleeping. Perhaps we'd better not disturb him until the morning, Doctor. been strangled to death. Ruth. It was a shock. She'll be all right in a minute. You were right, Doctor. There must be a secret entrance to this room. Someone has made a second desperate attempt on Ruth's life. Mrs. Krug was not the intended victim. done this. Let's see. Robert was in his room. Yes, but we know where Hans was. Could there possibly be a secret passage to the ape's cage? I don't think it was the ape. His animal instinct would have told him it was not Ruth. Possibly. But what motive could any body have for wanting to murder Ruth? Robert is the only one who would profit by it. Yes, and we know he was in his bed ourselves. Besides, he's a hopeless paralytic. Dad! Dad! You're all right now, dear. Tell me what happened. She had gone to bed. I had fallen asleep reading. When I came back to bed, she was lying there with those horrible marks on her throat. Well, didn't you hear anything? I didn't hear or see anything. Oh, Dad, take me away. That's Uncle Robert's bell. I'll go to him. Wait. Don't tell him. The shock would kill him. All right. I won't tell him a thing. I, 
I thought I heard something. Has anything happened? No. I was about to retire when I heard your bell. Is there anything I can do for you? Nothing, thank you. Well, you seem disturbed. Are you ill? This has been a very severe ordeal for me, Doctor. Ruth. Are you all right, Uncle Robert? Yes, dear. Come in. Something disturbed me and I rang for Mrs. Krug. The doctor answered. Your uncle is uh, exhausted. I'll get him a sedative. No, thank you. Come here, Ruth. I thought I heard something and I was a bit worried about your safety. No, I'm all right, dear. Uh, doctor, did you learn anything? Yes. Robert did not know of Mrs. Krug's death. I was taking his pulse when Ruth entered the room unexpectedly. And it stopped completely for several beats. There can be no possible connection. Why, the man is a helpless paralytic. I'm not so sure. I want to find that out for myself. Would you be so kind as to take Ruth downstairs? Certainly. Thank you. It's late, dear. You'd better try and get some rest. And you'd better go to bed, too, Ruth. I'll take care of your uncle. All right, Ted. Good night. Good night, dear. Ruth has told me of your case. I'm very interested. Medical science can't help me, doctor. Nevertheless, if you would permit me, I should like to make an examination. Very well. See for yourself. let the girl escape. You have failed again. It was her bed. I was sure it was the girl. Dad, it was my mother I killed. Do you understand my mother? Emma? Dead? 
You put the idea in my head because you wanted the money. You told me when the girl was out of the way, you would acknowledge me as your son. And we'd both be rich. They'll hear you. Shut your vile mouth. Why didn't you tell him I was your son? And now mother is dead. And it's all your fault, you shrunken devil. And yours and the girl. And I'm gonna kill you both. Hands. Hands. I was wrong, Mr. Wilkes. It's utterly impossible for Robert to ever walk again. Why, Ted? What do you mean? Ruth, you must realize that the attack made on Mrs. Krug was obviously meant for you. But who would want to harm me? There is only one possible solution. The ape. Yogi. Oh, Ted, if he is loose, he will kill me. Oh. Mr. Wilkes, will you see if Yogi's in his cage, please? Why, yes, yes. Oh, Ted. Then it was Yogi's arm that I saw. I wasn't dreaming. I'm not sure yet, dear. Oh, Dad, take me away. Here. Have you got a revolver in your car? No, sir. I've got it right here. So if Yogi messes out with me, I'm going to blow a hole right through his fold. Good. Good. Come along with your revolver. No, sir. Not me. I wouldn't go down there with President Hoover. Not that he's a better man than you, but the position he holds. Shaw, sure. give me that gun. Well, there's going to be another deal. Jeep is securely fastened in his cage, and there's someone else in this house. Ted, what are we going to do? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is get you out of here immediately. Exodus? Yes. Bring the car around front as quickly as possible. It can't be too quick for me, boss. Don't you worry, dear. Dr. Clayton! Dr. Clayton! Dr. Clayton! What is it, Hans? Something terrible happened to Mr. Robert. Ted! Go to him. I'm all right with hands. Go. Come on, Wilkes. Hans, what is it? Dead, Doctor? No, he's still breathing. The same hand that murdered Mrs. Krug. But I think we got a chance this time. I think he'll be able to talk. What happened? Take Ruth away. Ruth safe? Who was it? I am the guilty one. I... I forced him to do it. Him? Who do you mean? He is my son. Hans. Hans! Ruth! 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 
Excuse me, Bob. I want to do one of them things around the house. Well, Dr. Elson was an exponent of the Darwinian theory. Huh? He believed that they were our ancestors. You mean that he's related to me? Exactly. Grandfather that looks something like him, but he wasn't as active. <laughs> 